Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recent release of 4M Linux. Now I've taken a look at 4M Linux before but it's been several years and I, it's an interesting kind of project. It's an independent distribution and it's really minimal. You can run it as a live USB or you can install it if you prefer but it's kind of minimal. It's you know it's for those that like distributions such as Puppy Linux, for example, or Antic, you know, the more minimal kind of distributions. And I sometimes do like playing with these types of distributions. So if I go to their website, you will see 4MLinux.com. There's not much information on this website, unfortunately. Here, the main page is just an announcement that version 44 stable was just released. But really, it really doesn't tell you much about the distribution. You have an about page, but there's not much on the about page about 4M Linux other than it explains the name 4M is because 4M Linux stands for the four M's. The M's are maintenance, meaning it's a system rescue CD uh, or USB stick if you prefer. So maintenance. The other one is multimedia and multimedia of course is for audio and video playback and then mini server and when they say mini server they're really talking about networking and they're talking about FTP, HTTP, uh, Telnet and SS SSH, you know, INET basically is what they're talking about with the mini server. And then the fourth M is mystery because they have a small collection of Linux games available on the distribution as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click download. I'm going to go ahead and grab that latest ISO and I'm going to run through a quick first look of 4M Linux version 44 inside a virtual machine. So I spun up a VM here and this is 4M Linux version 44.0 and it appears that they are using the ultra lightweight window manager known as JWM. If I left click on the desktop I get a left click panel so this is unusual usually it's a right click but they have it set up as a left click a right click uh, left click right click menu <laughs> it's a left click menu you also have the menu here on the icon here in the panel because JWM it's very similar to open box but the good thing about JWM if you're building a Linux distribution around one of these kinds of minimal window managers JWM has a panel where, where obviously open box does not have a panel by default. Uh, I not crazy about the kind of like Windows 11 wallpaper that they're using, although it's been all the saturation has been taken out. So it's more of a, a grayish black and white kind of picture. Uh, not my favorite wallpaper. You have a little bit of a conky here going on here. Conky is a program that's basically your system monitor. And just looking at it, uh, I wonder if I can actually tell how much CPU and memory we're actually using. Um, it really doesn't tell me much here, but I'll probably pull up a terminal here in a minute and maybe run HTOP if it's installed. Now, HTOP may not be installed because, again, this is such a minimal distribution. It's really designed to be, again, it's designed to be able to be run as a live uh, DVD or a live USB. So there's going to be... Well, I was trying to actually zoom in here in the terminal, but it looks like they have, yeah, some of the key bindings are a little different here in LX term. But let's see if HTOP is actually installed. It is. And JWM is one of the lightest window managers, if not the lightest window manager typically. Uh, this is very typical of JWM is 200 megs of memory is being used right now. 200 megs of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this virtual machine. That is actually pretty incredible. I'm not sure what kernel they're using. If I do a uname-r, we've got kernel 6.1.60 here on the system. So that's a pretty recent kernel. Now let me see exactly what is installed out of the box here on 4M Linux. Because if I go through the menu system, they have bash. So I'm assuming that would just open a terminal. Okay, well that terminal is different than this terminal, right? Because the prompt is different. So this is root. And this is the live user. Well, it says root. So both of them are the root user, but the prompt is different. Hmm, that is interesting. So if I do an LS, or are they the same? Maybe it's a different shell. Maybe this is bash and this is a different shell. Let's do an LSBLK. LSBLK is not found. So, and you can see ash is telling us that. So that is 
a different shell. This is not bash. This is a lighter weight, min more minimal shell called ash. And you can also see that because they're trying to save space and be more minimal, not all of the GNU core utils are on the system. LSBLK is not available. So that is interesting. If I do a LSBLK here, it also will not be found. But you can see now the shell that is telling us that LSBLK is not found is bash. So got two different at least two different shells installed if i go back into the menu system we have an internet category and oh we're not going to have a big bloated browser like firefox or chrome we're going to have netsurf um, netsurf is not great but it is usable and if you need something minimal i mean it's there but again for a live usb stick it would be fine if this was something you were actually going to install on physical hardware and try to live in uh, you're going to want a better browser than netsurf which we might check out how to install some programs other than the defaults here in a minute we have hex chat for our irc client so probably if you need to connect to like uh, the 4m irc channel if they have one you know you could get support through that Silfeed is our desktop email client if i click on that we can go ahead and set up our email account of course i'm not going to do that so let's go ahead and cancel the setup Silfeed is not my favorite desktop email client either. I would probably install something like Thunderbird or Geary or Evolution and you know, something better than Silfeed. Transmission is the BitTorrent client for the GNOME suite of software. It's actually a rather fantastic BitTorrent client. Let's close out Transmission. One thing I'm kind of surprised being a, a minimal distribution, there's a lot of stuff actually installed out of the box here. The thing is, everything they installed is you know smaller programs there's nothing really big or heavy here so also under internet i mean we have uh, download managers like uh, you get gw get which i'm assuming is just a graphical front end to w get i've never actually yeah it's a download manager so got a couple of different download managers installed under the internet category under the office category LibreOffice is not here but the GNOME Office programs are here. So Abbey Word and Numeric are GNOME uh, Office applications. Abbey Word is the word processor. Numeric is the spreadsheet program. Let me open up Abbey Word and let me make it full screen. If I go to help and about Abbey Word, this is Abbey Word 3.0.5. Also go to help and about GNOME Office. You can uh, <laughs> you can get help information about uh, what GNOME Office is, but it's trying to open Pale Moon as the browser. So we did have a different browser other than NetSurf. I guess we had Pale Moon as well. I go to about, about Pale Moon. This is version 32.5.0. I was actually under the impression that Pale Moon really didn't see much uh, development anymore. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Pale Moon is available. Was Pale Moon here in the internet category? It wasn't. That's weird that NetSurf is here, but Pale Moon is not listed in the menu system. But, you know, let me go ahead and continue through the menu system here. We have various notepads as a subcategory. We have Leafpad, Editor, and Beaver. I've never heard of Beaver. Let me open up the Beaver Editor. Uh, this is Beaver 0.4.1. It looks like a very simple, very plain text editor uh, we have a maintenance category now this will be where all of the system rescue cd stuff is and this will be like the biggest category of stuff here so you've got data you got backups uh, manual automatic imaging you got recovery stuff uh, such as good news dd rescue you got wiping files you got various file managers nnn you got midnight commander which is a terminal based file manager midnight commander Pretty neat little terminal based file manager. It's actually quite good. Also, under the file managers, you have PCMan FM as the graphical file manager, which PCMan FM is one of my favorite GUI file managers. We also have mGrampa, which is a uh, archiving tool. We have XArchiver, which is also an archiving tool, and we have File Roller, which is another archiving tool. So File Roller is GNOME's archiving tool. XArchiver is XFCE's archiving tool. Uh, I don't know why you need all of that, but 
they're all here if you need them. Under CD, DVD, we have ISO Master, FI Burn. Uh, so you have the ability to rip and burn CDs and DVDs if you need to. Under Partitioning, you have GNU Parted because you do need to partition a drive. If you're going to actually install 4M Linux on physical hardware, it is a command line installation and you will need something like a parted or cf disk or f disk to go ahead and manually partition your drives f disk is already installed so is cf disk uh, g disk and cg disk are also here so you've got about six different partition managers to choose from under the monitoring category we have various um, network monitoring tools such as uh, ncdu netwatch if top and of course we had h top for our system monitor under qemu we have a qemu and bios and UEFI under the four menu uh, category here. Of course, QEMU is for uh, virtualization for virtual machines. Under miscellaneous tools, we have GTK hash, UNET Booten, which UNET Booten is a, a program that writes to USB drives, so you can burn an ISO to a USB stick. UNET Booten is kind of flaky kind of software. I've used it in the past, but it's really, I think it's mainly for burning like Debian based and Ubuntu based ISOs to drives. I don't think it does real well with things like Arch based distributions, for example. You probably want a more modern uh, ISO program like uh, Etcher, you know, Bellina Etcher to actually burn ISOs to USB drives if that's something you're really wanting to do. We have the multimedia category, of course, for one of the four M's. We have several um, video players here. So we've got M player, celluloid, we've got Minitube if you want to watch some YouTube. We've got several audio players, including XMMS. Uh, let me go ahead and click on XMMS because it's really neat because it kind of looks like the old Winamp program on Windows, right? So uh, neat little small minimal audio player. Under Let's Rip, we have more CD rippers. Under Let's Mix, we have various mixing tools like uh, Awesome Mixer. Avu Control is also here. Under Let's View, we have our image viewers. Under Let's Paint, a few simple paint tools such as MT Paint, GNU Paint, and Next Paint. Under Let's Edit, you've got uh, Image Magic for uh, editing uh, images. We got Audacity, obviously, for an audio editor. We have a MIDI category, and we also have a devices category. The devices category, it looks like it is for your webcams, because we have things like WX Cam, GUVC View, which is a program I often install on my systems, and GTK Cam. So there is a ton of stuff in this menu, right? So there's a lot of things on this ISO. Uh, we have the 4M category. One thing I did want to do is uh, in the 4M category, we have things like the updater and the installer. If you want to run through the installation, yeah, it's just a command line installation, right? It opens a terminal. You will already have to have your drive partitioned if you actually want to run through the installation, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to take a look at this in a live environment. But one thing I do want is to read the help. So let me go ahead and click on the help because this is pretty good documentation because the website didn't have much, but this little help document is actually pretty good. And they do have a section here on 4M Linux packages. So how do you get extra packages? It's an independent distribution. So they're not really basing off of something like Debian or Arch or Ubuntu or anything like that. So where do you get extra packages? Well, you're kind of limited there. They are there. Uh, and, and it actually has a pretty good selection, but note, they call their packages add-ons, meaning add-ons because these are not already installed on the system. These are, these are extra add-ons you can add to your 4M Linux installation. And you can see the add-ons are located in slash var slash 4M Linux. So let me go ahead and open a terminal and let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to CD over to slash var slash 4M Linux. If I do an LS, there are all the add-ons. You can see they all start with add-on underscore name of program. For example, if I wanted to install transmission, which is already installed, but add-on underscore transmission. So that's the transmission BitTorrent client. And if I scroll up, you can see there's quite a bit of stuff available here as an add-on. I also noticed they've got directories here, core, help, samples. Uh, let's do a ls of this core directory. 
Um, we've got BusyBox, glibc, okay. So there, there's uh, quite a bit of stuff here that you could play with here. So how would you install one of these add-ons? If we go back to the documentation, you use the ZK script. So ZK, so all of these add-ons are tar XZ files and the ZK uh, script, what it does, it probably just extracts that archive and places the files in the correct places on the file system. You know, so it'll put the binaries and slash user bin or wherever they're putting their binaries. It'll put the man page and, you know, slash lib or they'll, they'll put the, the proper files in the proper places for you. So let's see if this actually works. Let me find something that I actually want to install and play with. So I notice X term is here. So let me go ahead and see if I could do a ZK add on underscore and X term and then we'll just do a tab complete here in the bash shell and let's see if that actually installs X term now something popped up and went away real quick that seemed like a really quick installation if that was an installation let me see if I can launch X term so X term is here but I don't know X term might have been here out of the box anyway if I go back to the documentation yeah ZK and then name of add-on does install the add-on so uh, that is the correct way to do this. ZK update updates the system to the latest version of Forium. So if I do ZK update, hit Y for yes. And do you wish to continue? The latest version is 44.064 bit. Now we're actually on the latest version, so I will decline that. I just wanted to verify that ZK update does work. Let me go ahead and close out of the uh, documentation here. So I'm gonna close that save changes no i shouldn't have made any changes to that document i'll close the terminal here now we do have the dock at the bottom i'm not, not sure what dock this is is this plank or some other dock i'm trying to uh click on it to see if it would give me any information i'm really not sure what this is i could open a terminal and what i could do is xprop installed if i hit enter xprop it's not installed that's the x properties command what this does is you enter a X prop in a terminal and your cursor turns to an X and then you click on a window, you know, such as this dock at the bottom and will actually tell me the properties such as the window title and you know, things like that. So, uh, but I'm assuming that's some really minimal lightweight dock. It is actually rather responsive, like the zoom effect is buttery smooth. So I'm actually, I would like to know what, what that doc is. I could actually CD back to slash var slash uh, 4M Linux where all the add-ons are. And what I could do is run an LS. I'll do a LS dash LA for the long format. I'm gonna grip for, I think it might be Plank. Let's see if Plank is there. Nope. Well, how about Doc? <laughs> Just trying to guess that maybe that Doc is part of the name. I'm not sure what other Doc this could be. Uh, is it one of the old school Docs from years past, like a Avant or a what was one of the other popular uh, Cairo doc is a popular uh, doc from years past. Cairo's here, but not the Cairo doc. Uh, what I think they renamed Cairo doc to GLX doc. Uh, none of that is here. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that doc is. So because we only have one user on the system right now, the root user, what if you wanted to modify or edit uh, the config for JWM, for example. Where are those configs located on the system? So uh, let me open a file manager. We default to the slash root directory because slash root is the home directory for the root user. But uh, I don't see any JWM configs here in slash root. They're probably going to be in slash user slash share. I'm just taking a wild guess. So slash user slash share. And let's see if there is a JWM directory somewhere in here. Again, this is just a guess. And it was a good guess because slash user slash share slash JWM does exist. And you can see you have an auto start file. So this is what is launching things like the uh, dock and the conky, right? You have X render. This is what is setting the screen resolution. By default, it's set to 1028 by 720. I manually uh, forced it to be 1920 by 1080 here for purposes of, of this video. And then this here, system.jwmrc, that's the actual JWM configs. So you should edit these files here if you actually want to change the uh, system level, the root level uh, JWM configs. Overall, I got to say uh, 4M Linux 
is a really strange distribution, right? Uh, it's clearly designed primarily as a live USB, a live rescue CD USB, because it has all of these really small uh, like partition managers and network managers and things like that built into it. But it's also weird because on top of that, you include like three or four different video players, three or four different audio players, you know, lightweight audio and video players. And then they also talked about gaming, which I actually didn't see a gaming category. There's the mystery category, and it does have some really basic games like chess and Sudoku and, you know, old school things like Asteroids. So you, you've got some games here as well. So that's kind of a strange mix, but it's it seems to be it seems to have some kind of following because, again, this distribution has been around for about 13, 14 years now. And I do think, I mean, I, you know, a lot of people want to talk about pointless distributions. I don't think this is a pointless distribution because I do think it's unique enough that it kind of stands out. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about the following people. Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tools, Devler, War Gen 2, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at 4M Linux would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen as well all these names you're seeing on the screen each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen help support my work because i don't have any corporate sponsors i'm sponsored by the community if you like my work subscribe to distrotube over on patreon peace guys